I have a very simple tutorial for you today and it was sort of an accidental, not really, um, thing that I came up with last week when I had this mirror that I bought last summer off Facebook Marketplace. It's quite large, it's a beautiful mirror. So I painted it beige because it was just plain wood. I wanted to put the Elysium transfer, which is the new transfer from Iron Orchid Designs. But then I painted it that pretty beige color and I was like, ah, oh, you know, the other new transfer. So here's the Elysium one, if you guys have not seen that. With daisies and, oh, I actually did put it on a large six pane window frame. The whole thing fit perfectly. I didn't have to cut anything really, just trimmed around the edges. And I really liked it and it was a pale vintage pink and it matched in with these roses absolutely perfectly. And then I did this beautiful beige color and I was like, oh, the other transfer would look really, really nice on that one, which is May's roses. So it's like a sepia tone, and I thought, oh, that would be really pretty. I wanted to leave the center, you know, so it could be used as a mirror, and then just put transfer on the side. And then I just couldn't decide. So I decided to put them together, and they were perfect together. They complemented each other so perfectly. I find that the, the sepia tone one looks really nice as almost like a background and then it matched up really beautifully with, I don't know if you guys have taken a look at this Elysium one yet, but there is some script behind it. So it's almost like a faint postal script that's behind it, and that just kind of ties in perfectly with the black and white sepia of the maize roses. So it really, really complements one another. I actually can't wait to do this on a piece of furniture because I really do feel that the IOD sisters are brilliant. I always say that, I'm always tooting their horns because they are. But instead of doing it on a mirror, I decided to do it on a window frame, which is what I do with transfers a lot. Um, I do two, two of the classes that are my most popular classes are porch signs with upcycled shutters because I have a hundred, I had originally 170 shutters for, that I salvaged from a building and I still have at least half of them left and they make perfect porch signs. So some of you may have seen the videos I've done in the past where I do the porch sign. I've actually done two tutorials. Look at how pretty this one is. And I did not paint this. This is authentic. So if it's kind of a boring color or really beat up, I will often just paint the frame. This looks like I maybe did paint it, but what's cool about this one is one of a kind. It's got these little handles on the bottom, which I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it all as is. And I'm just going to show you guys how I layered maize roses, the brand new transfer maize roses. So I actually have the leftovers from this window. So that's what's amazing. So you, you buy these two together there's so many things you could do. Complimentary, you could do some, and they, they could all be part of the same decor, 100%. If you were doing a gallery wall, or you were doing just, you know, some kind of set of upcycling, a whole bunch of like sort of kitchen thing, kitcheny things, there's just, so, if you wanted to have them in the same room, you can. If you wanted them to be completely separate, that would be fine too, but they do complement one another beautifully. So first thing that you always have to do is clean your surface. This particular window also has a crack in it up here. I don't know if you guys can see that crack, which is gonna be fine because I'm going to cover it up with the transfer. So that's, I mean, if they're really cracked or broken and the glass is gonna fall out, then you're probably better off taking the glass out and trying to just put wood in or something or replace the glass. But for tiny cracks, it doesn't matter. I will totally cover that up. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is clean it really good. I like to use a glass cleaner. So like I said, this um, frame was already pre-painted this color, which I don't know, it's gonna look so awesome with the leaves and the color of these flowers. I should have actually cleaned the wood frame a little bit better, but I can always do that later. All right, so clean. You wanna make sure that you have as much of the dust and grime 
off of those so that you have a really nice clean surface for the transfers to adhere to. So that's it. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to cover up this crack with the sepia toned one first, the maze collection. And I actually decided I'm going to keep, I'm, I can't fit the word maze in here, but I am going to keep the rest of this on here. I think this is just gonna be super pretty. I think I'm going to do this separate. So the first thing, I, cause I really want to get the roses in the right place. So I'm gonna cut this out. Make sure you keep your backing on. So no dust gets on that. I'll put those aside. I'll do that last. And okay, so you can go over top of, if you have more than one uh, pane in your window, you can do an over top. And I have seen people do that. You really do have to take the time to put them. You don't want them to get too much. I mean, a little bit of cracking is okay, but you really do want um, to have it nicely kind of curving over and not cracking too much, which is really hard to do. So when I'm doing something fast and I, you know, I, I'm okay with this just being in the middle and having the two parts meet up here. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today. What I like to do is, first of all, this is, this. if you haven't seen May's Roses, it comes in four parts. Um, which you could put as a wreath in a circular position on the front of a dresser or anything. However, it's also chunked in a way where you can position them differently, like it's kind of shown here on this dresser or even up here. So that's what I'm going to use is just the corner of it today. So I've only got the one piece left. The rest of them, um, this booklet I've used on the mirror in the back and I think a bit on a dresser that I also did. So. I am going to do this today like that. The edges are not completely straight because that's set to match up with another piece, but I'm actually going to just cut it so that it's literally straight across. So that will be easy to put into the corner. And you know, the papers, if you didn't know, if you haven't seen the transfers yet, if you're new to this, you'll see the grid marking on the plastic is kind of there for that reason. So we can measure nicely and have some good, nice straight cuts. So that will fit perfectly right there. And then I will just kind of push it right into the corner and you'll make a bit of a fold in it enough so that you can see it actually is gonna work out perfectly right on that line and then cut. That doesn't happen very often that you go right from one line to another that perfectly. This window is sort of the perfect window, but I did not intend that. That was just lucky for me. So then I will take the other piece like that. So you get your pressure stick. Every transfer comes with a little pressure stick, which they're clear, they're awesome. They don't break, they don't bend but they do sometimes get misplaced <laughs> because it's harder to find them sometimes. Sometimes it's a good idea to just mark them with like a Sharpie on there or something so that they stand out so you're not looking for it. I actually do want to really butt it right up to the end because that crack goes right to the end. So I'm going to try to butt it up to the end as much as I possibly can to cover up that crack, which means I'm going to have to do the same thing to this one. Okay. So that they match up. I'm just gonna make sure they match up. Mm. A little bit more. Okay. Close enough. Then that's when you want to take your backing off. Okay, so trick as well. So if you have never placed transfers on glass before, they are like a suction magnet for the transfers. So you may have noticed if you've ever put it on wood or a painted surface, there's a little bit of leeway before you really press it down to sort of pick it up and move it around if you don't like the positioning. That is not the case when you are putting it on glass. So you do, this is the part where you have to be extra careful. Um, because where it touches the glass is where it will stay. 
unfortunately you are not ever going to get it off which is really great for the adheres they adhere to the glass so well that you don't have to top coat it like they don't they do not come off and I've done so many of them so the nice thing here is that I actually am just butting it right up against the frame and I can just place it right down here they also come off very very easily off the plastic so I like to start on one end let the air get underneath the trick is to get sorry this might wobble I'm using my camera is actually on the same table as the surface I'm going to be rubbing on so might wobble a little bit sorry about that you guys so you can already tell as the air gets underneath it just comes off ridiculously easy some of the more detailed ones where there's all kinds of little bits um, transfers some of the more detailed transfers that have all kinds of little separate unattached pieces they don't come off as easy as the ones that are all just one full piece but when you have these ones like this that are all one full piece really it's almost like a pushing down of the transfer and a pulling up of the plastic um, using the air to help you yeah starting at one end and then just lifting it off they just come off ridiculously easy so easy check it out and then I like to take this and just burnish it in make sure there's no air bubbles that's it easy I've already lost my plastic there it is <laughs> okay so just gonna match up the second one here again starting to match it right up to the frame be careful not to drop it down because if it start touches the glass that's where it's gonna have to stay unfortunately and then you'll have to work around that which there's always a way to fix mistakes but if we can avoid mistakes in the first place that's that's <laughs> ideal okay so now I'm gonna do the same thing I'm actually gonna pull this one down this time so just being really careful when you place them down and then once they're down they're down taking a bit of that plastic and just burnishing it in getting rid of any air bubbles that is super pretty just on its own already <laughs> so that's the maize roses sort of as a background so this one uh, I'm going to have to do two and match them up so I've decided I want the writing to be down underneath the sepia tone roses I'm gonna do the same thing and cut it so that I can just butt it right up against the window frame and cutting it nice and straight along the line just like that so then again I'm going to just sort of create a bit of a line gosh I actually it's almost working perfectly again well I guess if it did on the first one it would on the second one almost right on a line but if you make a little bit of a crease then you'll know where to cut it's literally just slightly above the line okay placing that aside because I am going to put that along the top as well so that oh there's one you can sort of still see the crack there I might add a little bit of a, a leaf if I have a bit of a some sepia left so of the maize roses is a teeny leaf maybe just to cover up that crack okay so again I'm going to place this down so now I'm going to layer them placing this look at how beautifully the um, green leaves are matching up with this frame gorgeous so now you can see some of the maize roses behind it and you can see some of the writing here but yet it's matching up really really nice the shapes match perfectly tones match perfectly like who to thunk it something to be able to start in the corner and catch an air bubble and start 
just getting the transfer down, pushing it down. Come, it, they just go on glass. I find they go on onto the glass way easier than any other anything else. More than I, they go pretty easily on tin. I think it's the smooth surface, maybe. The smoother the surface, the easier they go on. So just riding the bubbles, riding the airwaves, letting the air almost like do the majority of the work, really. These are one of my most popular classes. Um, they always flow really well. People are always so pleased um, with their finished product. They can often mix and match different transfers. I think this is going to be a popular mix, is the Maze Roses and the Elysium together. Now I'm going to try to match this one up. I almost could have done that over top, but I'm not going to because that wasn't my original plan. I'm just going to try to match up the stems and place it down. I will often just use for the little ones, I'll often just use my thumb, especially if I misplace the little pressure stick. That's how easy they come off onto glass is you can almost just use your fingernails. If you see a part of it that doesn't come off right away, you can place it right back down and go over it. There we go. So now I have to just find a small portion of the other half of this transfer and try to match them up. Try to match this up. So this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because I've gotta cut it here and here in the corner. This one was easy because I was able to just square it up. This one's gonna be a bit trickier. And that's okay, get it. So I'm going to try to match up this flower here. That's sort of what my eyes drawing to the most. And then the petals of the daisy will also match up. Okay, so I can see that I need to cut it right about here. So the second line here. And roughly just above there. I could almost measure this. If I had a tape measure handy, I could measure it exact, which I think I'm going to do because I think I have a ruler here. I don't, but I have a popsicle stick, so I'm gonna mark it off. So just past that line. All right, let's match these up. Embrace the imperfections that I possibly might have be, be creating here. All right, there we go. Perfect. Once the air can get under it, that's when you just really can get going. Don't just sit there and do this, 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 and expect it to pop off. You really do need to peel back the plastic as you're pushing the transfer onto the surface of whatever you are putting it on. Gorgeous, love it. So now I'm going to add that little bit here in the top. Use that leftover for another project. Okay, so there we go. Let's try to put some of the lettering on here. Try to match these up. I think this lettering is gonna just make this. Just finish it off beautifully. The, such a vintage look. Maybe I will put the maze on there. Maze, maze cream collection of blooming, 12 ever blooming roses. Placing it down. This is the one where I like to use these little ones like this. This is where I like to use my fingernail. They're just, it seems easier than using the plastic stick, but you also can use the plastic stick. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. I love it, you guys. I wish I had this reversed. 
because I, I still haven't figured out how to uh, reverse my camera angle so that you guys are seeing it, reading it from the right direction. And that's it. That's it, that's all. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Clean your glass first, um, which is really easy with glass cleaner and just sort of position on the, tra the transfers together first before you take the backing off. Be very careful when you do take the backing off because once you place them down onto glass, there is no leeway. They suction down and stick right there. So just that's the only thing that you really have to be careful when you're putting transfers on glass or a mirror. Um, one trick I did want to mention, and I have done it, is there is Krylon um, mirror spray that you can get if you ever wanted to make this into a vintage mirror, like a window into a vintage mirror um, after you've put the transfers on because the mirror effect actually goes on the back, which is cool. So if you liked this and then you decided after a while you wanted to turn it into a vintage mirror, you just buy that Krylon, I think it's Krylon, um, mirror, mirror finish and you spray the back and there is a little technique where if you want it to look really vintage and worn, you can actually use like spritz it with water, let it dry and then do another layer, but you actually spray the back. So after, you, I could totally do this after. I could enjoy it like this for a while and if I wanted to turn it into a mirror, I could just get some of that spray paint. So you can do it on a mirror. This is just a cute little window. I personally like them just like this. All right, you guys have a lovely day and we'll see you again next month.